Bitcoin, the nine worst scandals to have rocked the cryptocurrency industry. Cryptocurrency seems to be everywhere these days, from Super Bowl advertising to Bitcoin ATMs, despite the fact that it has yet to become a widespread payment method. It has become alarmingly common means for scammers to access people's money. Over 46,000 consumers have reported losing money, a total of over $1 billion, in cryptocurrency to scams since the beginning of 2021. That's around one of every $4 reported lost. That is more than any other payment method. The average individual's reported loss, $2,600 to be exact. Bitcoin 70%, Tether 10%, and Ether 9% were the leading cryptocurrencies used to pay scammers. Cryptocurrencies have various qualities that make it appealing to scammers, which may explain why reported losses in 2021 were approximately 60 times more than in 2018. There is no bank or other centralized body to identify questionable transactions and try to prevent fraud from occurring. Crypto transfers cannot be reversed, and once the money is gone, it can't be recovered. And most people are still unaware of how cryptocurrency works. These factors are not exclusive to cryptocurrency transactions, but they all favor opportunistic criminals. Today, we looked at nine times criminals crack the system and use Bitcoin to perpetrate crime. Remember, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to get updated whenever there's new content on the channel. The following are some of the biggest scandals ever to shock the world of blockchain, but while none of them have left a permanent stain on its reputation, they should serve as a reminder that not everything that glitters is gold. Hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel keeps us in business and motivated to serve you even better content. So go ahead and smash those like and subscribe buttons. Also, hit the notification bell to ensure you don't miss out on any of the action as it happens. Without any further ado, let's dive right in. We will be outlining the scandals in order of gravity, from least to most impactful. So sit tight, grab a cup of coffee, and follow through to the end, and get ready to have your mind blown. Bitcoin, the nine worst crime scandals to have rocked the cryptocurrency industry. Number nine, the airport arrest of Charlie Schramm. Schramm co-founded the Bitcoin exchange BitInstant, the investment firm of IntelliSense Capital, and is a founding member of the Bitcoin Foundation. However, he made headlines when he was arrested at JFK Airport on his way back from Amsterdam, along with Robert Fiella, for engaging in a scheme to sell over $1 million in Bitcoins to users of Silk Road, the underground website that allowed its users to buy and sell illegal drugs anonymously and beyond the reach of law enforcement. Each defendant was charged with conspiracy to commit money laundering and operating an unauthorized money transmitting business. Schrem was also charged with willfully failing to file any suspicious activity report regarding Fiella's illegal transactions. Schrem eventually pled guilty to a reduced charge of assisting and abetting unauthorized money transmission and was convicted of assisting and abetting the operation of an unlawful money transmitting business in December 2014 ordered to refund $950,000 and was handed a two-year jail sentence. He was in prison in March of 2015 and released a year later, and has recently joined the blockchain wallet Jax as Director of Business and Community Development. Number 8. Moolah – Fraud in the Age of Digital Identities In October of 2014, Moolah, the firm behind Moolah and MinPal Exchange, declared bankruptcy. What appears to be yet another failed cryptocurrency exchange narrative has a very unusual twist in the form of Moolah's CEO, or rather in the form of his numerous identities. MintPal was already in serious danger when Moolah acquired it and then failed to restart it. Its CEO, Alex Green, stated that the company simply ran out of cash and had to shut down operations. Alex Green, on the other hand, was actually Ryan Kennedy, a longtime internet scammer who also went by the aliases Ryan Francis, Ryan Gentle, and more. When he was apprehended a few days after the announcement, he acknowledged that the name scam, claiming that he had to invent a new identity and that he knew that he had fucked up on a catastrophic level. He also appears to have been dishonest about his regret since he vanished with nearly $2 million in Bitcoin from MintPal. Apparently, the SEC has been investigating the case. There were rumors of Green slash Kennedy being detained in the UK in 2015, but he was not caught until February of 2016. This time though, he was charged with multiple charges of rape and assault by sexual penetration. The court found him guilty and sentenced him to 11 years in jail. 
Number seven, Bitstamp, the 19,000 Bitcoin heist. On January 4th, 2015, Bitstamp, a Luxembourg-based European Bitcoin exchange that was among the largest by volume last year, reported that several of its operational wallets were compromised, leading to a loss of around 19,000 Bitcoin, or slightly more than $5 million at the time, but well over $30 million today. Despite the fact that the hack represented only a small portion of Bitstamp's overall Bitcoin reserves, the vast bulk of which are housed in secure offline cold storage systems, the business elected to cease operations altogether for several days to deal with the incident. There was no official comment regarding the facts of the breach, but it was rumored that six Bitstamp employees were targeted in a weeks-long phishing attempt leading up to the heist according to an unsubstantiated incident report allegedly leaked by the exchange. The exchange also stated that shortly before the breach, some of our customers reported receiving suspicious emails that were later discovered to contain malware, as well as that it had been the target of a large DDoS attack, though no Bitcoin was stolen from any of our customers in either of those incidents. In any event, it highlights the vulnerability that institutions like Bitstamp face and in reaction to the incident, the exchange implemented various new security measures such as multi-sig technology. Number 6. The $150 million DAO Heist The DAO stood for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. DAOs operate using rules encoded as smart contracts, which are computer programs that facilitate, verify, or enforce contract negotiations or performance or that eliminate the need for contractual provision. The smart contracts of the DAO are built on Ethereum, a public blockchain platform with programmable transaction capabilities that also serves as the foundation for the cryptocurrency Ether. The DAO was powered by Ether, which resulted in the creation of DAO tokens. DAO token holders would have the right to vote on investment ideas, proportional to the amount of tokens held, as well as the option to collect incentives based on the work output from the contractor's bids. As such, it was designed to be a type of capital venture firm that would invest in ventures in the sharing economy, and the DAO is believed to have raised the most amount ever in a crowdfunding campaign, resulting in the collection of money worth roughly $150 million in ETH in June 2016. While its architects plan to construct a more democratic financial organization that would be immune to human fallibility by relying on the trustless notion of blockchain and smart contract, human error was at the heart of the robbery that brought it down as rapidly as it rose. Hackers took advantage of a programming error in the DAO's code and transferred one third of its cash to a subsidiary account. The money could not be transferred out for programming reasons for four weeks, giving the Ethereum community time to discuss and determine what to do. It eventually decided to hard fork the Ethereum blockchain in order to return practically all of their funds to the original value and ownership prior to the attack. Though technically no harm was done to investors, this highly contentious move resulted in a split in Ethereum, with the old unforked blockchain retaining as Ethereum Classic, thereby dividing Ethereum into two different operational cryptocurrencies. Number 5. Ross Ulbricht and the Silk Road Scandals the Silk Road was a dark web market famous for trafficking narcotics of all kinds, as well as phony documents, forgeries, and other criminal products. All transactions were paid for with Bitcoin. It was founded in early 2011 and named after an ancient network of commercial routes through Asia. It was owned by Dread Pirate Roberts, an alleged alias for Ross Ulbricht. Alleged since Mark Ulbricht claimed that Mark Capelli's of Mt. Gox was the real Dread Pirate Roberts, named after the character in the beloved novel and film The Princess Bride, and that the FBI used him as a scapegoat when they were arresting him in October of 2013, shutting down the Silk Road and indicting him on charges of money laundering, computer hacking, conspiracy to traffic narcotics, and attempting to traffic narcotics. The FBI is alleged to have seized approximately 144,000 Bitcoin, about $280 million today, from Ulbricht. In May of 2015, he was condemned to five concurrent terms, including two life sentences, without the possibility of release. Ulbricht was also forced to pay a $183 million fine. Several people have been convicted of crimes directly related to the Silk Road, primarily drug sales, but Ulbricht was the big fish the authorities were looking for. Number 4. The MyCoin Pyramid Scheme A pyramid scheme is a type of Ponzi scam in which investors are promised profits in exchange for recruiting new participants into the scheme. 
it multiplies with each level of recruiting until it's difficult to recruit new investors, causing the scam to fail and robbing many participants of their deposits. It's an old notion with multiple, slightly different versions. Therefore, someone had to devise a way to use cryptocurrencies for illegal purposes. One such example is the defunct Hong Kong-based Bitcoin exchange MyCoin, which was shut down by local authorities in February of 2015. A preliminary examination of the Hong Kong Commercial Crime Bureau CCB, indicated that a relatively small number of investors may have lost up to $400 million. The concept was straightforward. Investors were encouraged to invest at least 400,000 Hong Kong dollars for 90 bitcoins to be held in the MyCoin account for a few months, with MyCoin promising a 150% return. Several arrests have been made, although it's unknown how much of the stolen cash has been or will be restored to the victims. Number 3. The Bitcoin Savings and Trust – A Breach of Trust For those who are unfamiliar with the term, a Ponzi scheme is a scheme designed to deceive investors. By offering bigger rewards and other investments, the fraudsters essentially pay existing investors returns off the funds they acquire from new investors. In that spirit, the Bitcoin Savings and Trust BTCST, guaranteed investors up to 7% monthly interest and raised at least 700,000 bitcoins, valued at over $1.4 billion today, between February 2011 and August 2012. The SEC conducted an investigation and discovered that the company's CEO, Trendon T. Shavers, solicited all investments and paid all alleged returns in bitcoins in online chat rooms and on the Bitcoin forum. In actuality, he used new bitcoins acquired from the BTCST investors to pay ostensible returns on outstanding BTCST investments while diverting bitcoins from BTCST investors for his personal use. He was charged and the court found that, despite publicly denying Ponzi scheme on the Bitcoin forum, Shavers knowingly and deliberately ran BTCST as a sham and Ponzi scheme and made materially false and misleading representations to BTCST investors and potential investors about how he would generate the promised revenue and the safety of their investments. The court ordered Shavers and BTCST to pay disgorgement and prejudgment interest totaling over $40 million. Number 2. Mt. Gox Mt. Gox used to be considered the largest Bitcoin exchange platform thefts and was the mother of all attacks. Mt. Gox, which was founded in July 2010, grew to handle more than 70% of all Bitcoin transactions. The exchange stopped withdrawals in US dollars on June 20th, 2013, which was merely the beginning of its problems. Following a succession of relaunches and additional trade halts, the company suspended all trading on February 24th, 2014, and its website went offline, returning a blank page. Mt. Gox filed for bankruptcy in Tokyo a few days later, stating liabilities of roughly 6.5 billion yen or $64 million at the time, and assets of 3.84 billion yen. According to the firm, it had lost approximately 750,000 of its customers' bitcoins, as well as approximately 100,000 of its own bitcoins, which is the equivalent of 7% of all bitcoin, which were valued around $473 million at the time. That would be over $1.7 billion today. It was initially unclear what caused the loss and is still unknown exactly what happened, but the exchange was presumably susceptible to many hacks between 2010 and 2014. Its investor, Jed McCaleb, sold the exchange to Mark Carpelli's in March 2011 after losing 80,000 bitcoins valued at more than $62,000 at the time. According to unconfirmed sources, Carpelli's was detained in August 2015 in Japan and released on a $100,000 bail. On the 14th of March 2019, the Tokyo District Court found Carpelli's guilty of fabricating data to inflate Mt. Gox's assets by $33.5 million and sentenced him to 30 months in prison, suspended for four years, which means he would serve no time unless he was charged with another crime within the four years. As of July 6, 2022, the Japanese trustee of Mt. Gox is still holding around 142,000 bitcoins. And now for the greatest Bitcoin heist to date. Number 1. The Bitfinex Exchange Hack 
the United States Department of Justice recently declared the recovery of 94,636 stolen Bitcoins, valued at $4.5 billion at the time, to be the world's largest confiscation of stolen cryptocurrencies. This was followed by IRS criminal investigation and FBI probes into the 2016 Bitfinex cryptocurrency exchange breach. The attack on Bitfinex, a cryptocurrency exchange based in Hong Kong, has been dubbed the heist of the century. A series of illicit transactions from Bitfinex users' wallets accumulated in the theft of 119,754 Bitcoin. Accumulated in the theft of 119,754 Bitcoin, worth $72 million at the time and $4.5 billion at current values in August 2016. The U.S. Department of Justice revealed in early February 2021 that it has collected more than $3.6 billion in allegedly stolen Bitcoin linked to the Bitfinex hack of 2016. As part of the investigation, authorities arrested a New York couple on suspicion of attempting to smuggle the digital products. For approximately six years, the great majority of that money in the wallet remained untouchable. Authorities were able to link the transactions to actual people as the money began to flow out of the wallet and into traditional banking systems. Heather Morgan and Elia Dutch Lichtenstein, a couple located in New York, are claimed to have been connected to the Bitcoin heist. Both have been arrested and charged with money laundering. At the time of writing, neither has filed a plea. The two were charged with conspiracy to launder money, which has a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison, and conspiracy to defraud the United States, which carries a maximum sentence of 5 years in prison. Investigators accused the two of attempting to launder the proceeds of the 119,754 Bitcoin stolen from Bitfinex's platform as a result of a hacking incident that resulted in over 2,000 illegal transactions. The stolen Bitcoin is said to have been sent to Liechtenstein's digital wallet. Keeping the loot in a digital wallet and not a cold wallet proved to be their biggest undoing, as you will soon see. The majority of the money in the digital wallet was left untouched for years, but as currency began to migrate out of the wallet and into the traditional banking system, investigators were able to trace the transactions back to the persons in the real world, something that would have been less likely if they had used a cold wallet instead. Authorities were at the time looking at the use of computer programs to execute large number of transactions simultaneously across many cryptocurrencies using dark web groups. Officials stated that they were prepared to seize over 94,000 bitcoins worth 3.6 billion at the time of confiscation, but the current value of the stolen bitcoin is believed to be over 4.5 billion dollars. As cryptocurrency grows in popularity, it is critical that the public and private sectors collaborate to ensure that users can deal safely and that criminals cannot exploit these new assets. This brings us to the end of the video. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get to know the next time we upload valuable content like this. Thanks for your time and stay safe out there.